Hey. Okay, quick, cool, 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 cool. Um. What's up, everyone? I hope I actually hope I'm clear. Just waiting for. There Brethren. he is. There he is. Brethren. There's the man. How you doing? There's the man himself. I'm good, man. man How are you himself. holding up? You're the man himself, bro. Oh yeah. <laughs> you're the man himself. I don't know. Like you're you're the man himself here. You're the man himself here. It's it's you're the man, bro. <laughs> How are you doing, doing brother? Uh, I'm, I'm good, man. Well. Congratulations, yeah. yo. I'm good. Dude. Congratulations on the Cane Prize nomination. Uh, thanks, bruv. You know, I'm just stalking you, bruh. <laughs> I've successfully managed to stalk you at UCT. I stalked you at OBF, Ubuntu. I'm stalking you into Kane. I'm stalking you into a second novel, <laughs> chap. You thought you were free of me. <laughs> The only place I haven't Life managed to, the only place I haven't managed to stalk you is the is the is the MFA. Yuski was like, nah bruv. Nah bruv. It's enough now. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so Masande, I just need you to give you a heads up. I just need to give you a heads up. Uh at Afro Lit, we have very serious conversations, but people in our comments are trolls, like they're savages. So I just need to warn you that there might be some unsavory questions from Mohale, Zukiswa, Chike. There's this one guy from Kenya called Troy. Like they just, they're sometimes very uncouth. And then there's like another cat called Ndengwa. I, it's a lot, bruh. But I'll do, my <laughs> to, I'll do my best to protect you from their nonsense, eh? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what's up. Uh, give it one more minute and then we can start. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. How's it going over there, man? Uh, hey, man, you know, we're holding it together. It's, yeah. um, it's tough, dude. It's tough, yeah. Yeah, I, but, see, you've got um, the, I see you've got the J. Cole mixtape drades out, bro. Are you releasing something soon? When are you dropping <laughs> <laughs> Novel mode. I'm in novel uh -huh. mode. Away, yeah. away, away, away. What do you mean he still styles? Troy, Troy is a hater. You see, we haven't even started and guys are trolling. Can you imagine, bro? <laughs> I, I, what up, uh, Troy? I think, I think let's, let's get into the reading. Um, and then, because then the sooner we get with the reading, the more we can talk about the, 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 the work itself and about your writing processes and whatnot. And then we'll give everyone enough time to um, compose their very smart literary questions without spelling mistakes. Uh, I'm looking at you, Troy. Full stops are a thing. So choose a section of your work <laughs> and we can get into something, yeah? Okay, cool. Um, so read, I'm gonna, uh, are you reading I, from, which one are you reading from? Triangulum, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah. Great, I, great. Yeah, I'm reading. Okay, so you um, read that, and then I'll block my very handsome face with a book so that people don't come into the questions asking what book we're reading. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to read from quite early on in the novel. Um, I'll be reading from separate timelines. Um, so I'll, I'll be reading a little bit from the 1999 timeline in the novel, and mm -hmm. then I'll reading from 2002 sure. um, I don't know generally like I kind of I prefer doing it this way um, the book itself like when I'm whenever I'm working on something I tend to think of it um, I don't know quite organically right so if like yeah. the character is one way mm. in one timeline it should kind of seamlessly like you know link to um, yeah. another yeah. timeline no, no, no. Read however so I, you want, man. We're here. We're here for you. We're here at your pleasure, man. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Um, all right. Cool. <clears throat> the following morning, after he'd returned coughing from peering into our mailbox, Data proposed a trip to a Pentecostal herbalist from out of town. A month before, he'd been laid off from his new job as a manager of a fleet of bands that delivered Amasi from a farm in Stutterheim, 
and had written a note for me to miss school so we could make it in time before the queues. My presence on the trip was for good luck, he said. We set out at noon. Dutta's retrenchment letter on the console between us. His double cab crossed the rail bridge at the edge of our town and entered Ginsburg, where he parked next to a sleeping Alsatian with patches of pale skin showing through its fur. It was shivering from flea bites, and I moved away, careful not to step on its tail. We walked through a grid of one-room houses with rusting roofs to a house with a grassy yard and a long queue outside the door. That aside, for an hour and a half, we shuffled in line before one woman collapsed, having reached the front of the line a moment too late. It took a while before a stooped man came over and carried her off. To pass the time, I looked around. The grass grew in sparse patches over the yard, disturbed in the middle by large angular rocks that marked a path. The stoop smelt of enough ammonia to cause a headache, I thought, before I got one. Dutta got to the front of the queue and disappeared into a room without windows, built onto the side of a house that was larger than the rest. When he returned without his retrenchment letter, he was holding two clear unlabeled bottles. One was for health and the other would assure us wealth, he said, hefting them at his sides. He was to drink three times from each bottle, he added. And when we got to the car, the dog had vanished along with its leash. Dada and I were silent as we crossed back over the rail tracks. Tell me what you want to do with your life, he said. I thought about it. I don't know, maybe take care of you. Dada sighed, shifting into first gear. Just like your mother, he said. You can't think of anything. You can't think for yourself either. I thought for myself. I want to be a scientist, I said. He didn't respond. The rest of our trip was silent, and it was only when we got home that I realized I could never tell him what I knew that I wanted to look for Mama through the longest telescope I could find. That afternoon, after we'd eaten our porridge and it drank from each of his bottles, Dutta went back to bed. I waited for his door to lock, then went to my room. I turned over my pillow and looked at the blood stains, now turned yellow, on his old pillowcase. This was in the spring of 1999. I'd been cured of acne. Nelson Mandela had announced his retirement, forfeiting a shoe in for a second term, and the world was ending because of a computer bug. <clears throat> this town, once a mission station, was named after a monarch whose general turned natives into settlers, offering them Fengu British citizenship in exchange for each other's blood. It spreads under us like a green tool its rolling hills dipping into spaces abandoned to waste. The grass is always warm, as if a giant had curled itself around the borders of Buffalo City and lain down to die before evaporating into the atmosphere. Part and I often take shelter in the shade of, the sto of, a, sto of a stone alcove under an arm. Part likes to argue with me over whose life would grade worse, hers or mine. It's my job to tell her to be fairer to her mom, to remind her that her mother has a vascular disease and she should stop picking a fight with her every day of the week. Lita tells her that too. Not that he doesn't have ideas of his own. For example, he says even adoption isn't a merciful act. It's a lucky draw. It gets to the point where you're afraid of your parents and they don't remember your name. He's lost faith in parenting, he says. These days, Lita loses himself in internet fantasies where the way to kill a monster is to give it a tonic of health or a life potion. He tells me to imagine a rerouted reality where life is not only the mirror of death, but also its catalyst. I tell him I'm not sure. Most of the time we agree though. It's been that way for two years now. Lita and I are closer, while Pat's grandparents are from Madeira. The three of us met one afternoon at the Master Matt's office on Alexandra Road, down the road from Bray Hospital and Hur School, the Force Milan. We were looking for tutor jobs, 
a week of free lessons was being provided by the state to primary students from Ginsburg and Gimbaza, and we'd settled into the waiting room where the aircon spat flakes of rust over the limu and potted plants. It made me shiver when it almost got in my hair, and I didn't like that, but I was too tired to care. I'd skipped my last three meals. Pot leaned back on the bench and made it creak. Next, two redhead women greeted us, offered us a jug of water, and told us none of us had the job. I wasn't surprised. I'd, sus I'd suspected there'd be a school background check. Outside, Lita told me and Pot he worked at the Mr. Movie up the road. He invited us over, took us back to the storeroom, and showed us an old tape of Debbie Does Dallas for an hour. It had love tracks dubbed over the dialogue. Lita thought we'd find that hilarious, and we did. I mean, I still do. All right. Dope. Yeah. That's the first part. Yeah, uh, man, that was lit. That was lit, man. <laughs> I think yeah. Um, okay. So, so the questions are slowly gonna come in, but I have to ask you the first one myself: is how high were you when you wrote Triangulum? <laughs> you know what's actually like really interesting um, with my first novel, right? Uh, in the reactive, because the characters kind of like you know they do a lot of recreational drug taking. Mm -hmm. um, when I released novel like a couple years ago now a lot of the reviewers like and a lot of people who'd read the book would come up to me and be like yo you know this this sounds like tripping or like being really like high on something I, and I really dig it for that and um, the funny thing is I, mean, I haven't actually told anyone this before that even though drugs feature prominently in that novel when I was actually writing it um I didn't write it with the intention of like depicting the characters as high. Yeah, yeah. In fact, yeah. In fact I was under the impression that I was writing uh, something that was very close to my actual perception and experience mm -hmm. of reality. And so I thought, yeah, this is kind of like a pretty yeah, straightforward yeah. thing so, that I've written there. Yeah. <laughs> after that, were you, were, you asked the, were you asked that quintessential uh, question everybody asks all youth black writers, how autobiographical was the story? <laughs> I actually love that question, man, to be honest. I Do feel you? like, yeah, ah, and I, I don't know. <laughs> I, look, okay, let me put it this way. Um, I was aware of this question even before I published um, and I'm aware of books that do this as well, but uh, I don't know. I've always dug it, man. Like when you read like an author that you like, and they have kind of like that quintessential first mm. autobiographical novel, and uh, it's nice. I like it. It's vulnerable. It's personal. So, um, but with my book, I did get asked, and it was not autobiographical, largely. Mm. But it was also a book that was written um, almost in tribute, you know, to the autobiographical first novel. All right, and, all right, um, all right. For those, for those, but for if those that of you who don't too... know, for those of you who don't know, Masande was exceptionally qualified in writing the high scenes because in Rez, he lived around the corner. <laughs> 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 and this man had the strongest weed in South Africa, my friends. Like, yo, it was deep, my Sunday. Living around the corner from you, it was deep times, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of put me on blast, man. Uh, um, we must, bro. We, we must. Had we must. Had uh, we just question. had to. Okay. Cool. Yeah, there's a question here. Uh, Ndengwa is asking... Do you consider writing or literature to be your salvation? Just to let you know, Dengwa is a born again loser and he's really he's in need of a new Jesus Christ right now. So you need to give him like a killer answer. Salvation. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess, you know, in a way, um, I look at writing as a means through which to actually like 
inhabit myself and inhabit like my reality and um i don't know like i feel like i experience the world a certain way and sometimes i can only really like make sense of it through the act of writing so it does it's definitely something that makes me um capable of making sense of my experience uh it's something that kind of convinces me that i'm alive and that i exist um and that you know also it's something that allows me to question reality actually um which i suppose would include questions around the afterlife and what comes next etc so mm-hmm. i would be quite confidently say yeah i could see it being some sort of salvation in the sense that it gets me closer to um to being human and understanding what being human is all right and triangulum obviously like being quite dense exploring uh aspects of time travel all of the spiritual aspect as well but also like having a very high a high science fiction factor uh troy would like to know what's your research process like basically he wants to know how he can plagiarize your novel <laughs> um how do i put this actually look Here's the thing, right? I I was um I was giving a class last year to um these animation studio anima- animation studio uh students, sorry, in an animation studio. And one person uh one student asked me, you know, how do I go about the process of world building um in my work? Like how do I figure out um because these kids were like exceptionally talented, man. They couldn't wait to go back to their computers and like construct it's crazy worlds and <laughs> they had the ability to do that right mm-hmm. and so he just wanted to know for me um how do i get to a point where i stop you know like okay you've done your world building now and you can kind of relax and i think i thought it was a really great question and that it mm-hmm. also provoked me as a speaker and um I realized that the best way to do it is basically to kind of um you think of your characters first and then you imagine um how your characters would occupy this world that you built so yeah. your characters actually act, act as a um, as a guide you know in in terms of how much you have to create around them and the reason I'm using that example is um for a book like Triangulum there it's basically joining two threads does the personal human psychological emotional story that i'm trying to tell which is um about this family you know and it's about this daughter and there's also another thread which is kind of um combining all of my preoccupations and maybe even anxieties um yeah. around ecology around capitalism and technology but uh I would definitely say that the first thing that you have to do with any story is to figure out why you're writing it, you know. Um Yeah, yeah. It's the engine of it and then after that you can kind of go crazy with research and etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um you're talking about the about the class you were giving and I know you've 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 done you did your MFA at UCT. what was your mfa experience like and how did that for example affect your writing and what did you take away from it i mean like i know you studied with the watts so i just want to know whether the watts <laughs> were very helpful to you, like your writing experience uh, <laughs> um actually you know my experience um doing masters in writing was actually like not unpleasant uh surprising but i was also like not like an ideal student i mean um was it because you were rolling papers instead of writing papers yes i was not rolling papers i was turning them in the library <laughs> <laughs> No but really like it was kind of like a really great opportunity to be around other writers to be around books mm-hmm. and um and also to be around like a really great mentor like I was studying under Imran Kovadia 
and he was actually quite open and encouraging us to kind of um, pursue our own separate lanes outside of the supervision of the class. And um, so, yeah, it was great in that way, man. Um, I got exposed to a lot of texts. I tried out all sorts of like different things um, in class, you know, got all sorts of criticisms. And yeah. um, some of that, have, yeah, some of were what those, I picked up. Those, was, did, you, did you find those criticisms valid as in like they were actually about your work and your text and writing or were those criticisms like, you know, just people just didn't understand what you were writing about or what you wanted to tell uh, the story. So like was the institution at which you studied, uh, was it like, yeah, were those criticisms valid basically? Or was it just like kids from Limpopo don't have telekinesis? You know, that kind of shit. <laughs> um, I, I actually chose to kind of see them as, um, as valid for the most part, because I was quite aware of the fact that I was a student myself. You know, part of the reason why I'd chosen to do this degree was to learn. So I was not really in a position to kind of be defensive. Although naturally, you know, that'll come on again. Um, yeah, but in terms of a lot of people not understanding stuff, that was huge, man, you know. Um, usually there'd be some, like, praise reserved for the writing, but somehow, like, what I was writing about or how I was writing about it um, would lose quite a few people in the class. Um, yeah. But no one was really mean about it, you know. Yeah. And some critiques, I thought, you know, this is valid and this is something I'll work on. And another thing that I actually decided to do quite early on was that uh, in the first year of the program, I was going to try out every writing style in my arsenal, every type of story. I was just going to go crazy and, um, and see, you know, how people responded to those things and then learn how to do them. So, um, yeah, it was pretty instructive. It was pretty instructive. Cool, cool. And did you find, and then once you finished writing Triangulum, did you find that your, 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 the reception of it, was it, uh, yeah, what was it like? Was the reception warm? Was it cold? Was it like, ooh, what, a, what, a, what is this type of thing? Because <laughs> um, I, found, I, I, found, think... I, found, I found Triangulum not, not shocking or surprising, but it was like delightfully different. I don't know, you and Mohale, we were on a panel together at Open Book Fest, <laughs> Young Flex. Um, and you know it was, it was so dope like talking about literature that wasn't what you'd expect to be the conventional you know conception of african literature so i wanted to know whether those preconceived notion of what africans write about and how they write whether those things affected the reception of your book mm -hmm. man that's that's actually um, a very good question Yes, you see and, people, uh, people yeah. I ask smart questions. People think I'm just a <laughs> troll here. I ask smart questions. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's a great question, especially like as it's something that we have to discuss as well as colleagues, you know, because uh, essentially what we are also talking about is like black knowledge production and how valid is it, you know, and... Um, yeah, can you please copyright that before Dr. Ndlovu steals it from you? She's one of the trolls here. We don't know about her doctorate. It might be one of those online things where if you create a username and password, you get your master's. And then if you upload your profile picture, you become a doctor. So black knowledge, <laughs> copyright that. Yeah, go ahead. No, she can use it. She can use it. It's fine. Um, but yeah, it's very valid, man, because I mean, like cultural and intellectual work is clearly... Uh, it's meant to somehow, it's, it's meant to reach people and it's meant to have uh, people begin to kind of engage mm. in different conversations. And of course, that whole process is stalled if you're not um, allowed entry into the discourse. And, usually quite, and, and you mentioned this in your question, um, usually what happens, of course, is that people are used to a certain kind of writing. And if they encounter a different kind, it's for some reason rendered invisible. You know, they don't kind of like register or even like hear it because it's just so alien, you know. Um, 
I feel like that's happened a little bit with this book. And um, in other cases too, some people will understand sections of it, um, but then other sections will kind of like be very far into them. Um, or some people will love the writing or be intimidated by the, by the structure. Or, um, you know, it's, it's all sorts of things. And, um, but for the most part though, I, it has been warmly received and I think that it's been received um, in a way that did begin dialogue um, around, you know, technology on the continent, the future of our ecology, et cetera. Mm. And I think it also like reached my, what I like to think as my readers, you know? <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. Uh, I yeah. think it's got to people who appreciate my work, people who um, I kind of vibrate at the same frequency uh, with, and yeah, I yeah. am deeply indebted no, to that. Yeah, no, no, I love no. Those it, it was it was a mind blowing book, man. It was it was very well written. I like the structure. It was like being in a in an Inception esque type of book. Which brings me to the question: When it's a <laughs> film, who will direct? <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue, actually. Ah, um, to somebody. I heard, like, who could it be? I don't Neil know. Neil like, And then you can have, like, that Shalto Copley character, like, that trademark, like, South African dude who's, like, been in, like, three of his films. What do you think? <laughs> that guy. Which one, which one would we give to him, though? Right? Like, what, what, what? I'm trying to think which role that dude would be in. My friend, um, they'll find a way. Don't ask questions. If Blomkamp is making it, he'll find a way. Ooh, other question. Will your, will, will Pearl Tusi be in it? Because you must know she plays everything in South Africa. Pearl Tusi. If we could get Pearl Tusi on the line, man. <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we might actually be onto something there now. Um, <laughs> I don't know, dude. I don't know. Um, I've been like, there's a friend of my brother's who said that I shouldn't like, I should work very hard at not allowing anyone to adapt my work. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, it was it was like a few drinks in, and he was like really emotional about this, and he was like, "Don't let anyone adapt it." Plus, um. I want like an exclusive peek into the book you've been really writing, the one that you'll never publish, that we'll find like after you've died, et yeah, cetera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, I don't really have a book lying around, but uh -huh. uh, I kind of thought about his adaptation thing. And I don't know, man, like I would be excited by someone else working on it uh, yeah. and kind of bringing a spin to it. And um, yeah. Yeah, dope, man. Um, and then I have, um, there's a question here that came about your writing process, but I'd like to break it up into two parts. What was your writing process like before lockdown and what is it now during lockdown? Because I presume there were two different things. Uh, yes, they were um, for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. But that's not necessarily because of lockdown per se. Um, but it's more, I don't know, like the thing that I'm working on, I basically kind of reached a different stage with it. And um, so right now in my process, there's like a lot of reading and a lot of editing as opposed to uh, necessarily like new writing. Um, but during the process of to trying to like draft a book from start to finish. I do kind of recommend the word count thing, you know? Um, deciding on a manageable word counts, anything from like 500 words to maybe like 1,500 words and mm. trying to stick that daily, you know, for at least a month, at least two months. And um, mm. then you have this beautiful raw material to work with and, you know, you can mm. kind of, Take it from there. And, and as a and as a as one of the more established youth writers, how do you keep a roof <laughs> over your head? <laughs> Odd jobs, man. Um, mm -hmm. 
you know, our jobs, uh, support networks. Because uh, right now, actually, um, I'm an editor as well for a certain literary journal, which is New like, Contrast. Uh, new, <laughs> new Contrast, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Um, I'm also, um, I also teach these days too, man. Um, I'm actually, I'm part of the program at Rhodes University. Oh, um, nice, nice. So, so it's good yeah. to hear, it's good to hear they now have, you know, teaching stuff. I, I thought it was like an advanced high school, but now they're, wow, they're <laughs> Steve, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. down there in Makanda, eh? Yo, 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 yo. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makanda is on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so the cover. Yo, yo. So yeah. All right, all right, all right. Real talk, real talk. So uh, with Triangulum, and I, and I know you are very brave, like putting in a lot of like uh, um, influences in the book, which I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, what are your non literally? Uh, influences that you find are informative for your work because back in university you're one of those cats who like liked watching silent Hungarian art house films and were like bro Transformers is on like <laughs> yo <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah absolutely like cinema definitely man because um, I was actually a film major as well to uh, mm -hmm. undergrad and you haven't um, thought about who would direct your shit? I thought about it and then I unthought about it, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. I, I, but, I, I, um, so yeah, like, yeah, film definitely had like a major influence on me, man. Um, just, yeah, like just being exposed to basically like the canon of great filmmakers while in university, mm. um, going through like and studying the form of, of cinema and going basically like going through how stories were told in that medium. And um, yeah, loved it. But yeah. I actually want to mention something else in the way uh, that was actually like extra literary, and that is music, specifically rap music. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Rap music was huge and a lot of um i know that a lot of us come into like writing first through actually through rap and hip-hop um i was definitely like one of those uh kids you know um it was i don't know like i i kind of discovered the stack of cds uh in my big brother's room and i remember like finding outcast there and Bone Thugs and Harmony. Our, our, yeah, yeah. And kind of getting started with that, obviously then I would kind of pursue it my own way and end up with like cannibal arcs, et cetera. But yeah, everything, it, it is so much just in terms of like cadence, how to like manage metaphor, even when it's inverted, everything about structure and yeah, man, it was, it was incredible. So, also so just give the me, possibility. So give me, give me your favorite your favorite la rap lyric that you would like to use as an epigraph in a novel, like that first page where you get to like quote someone free of copyright and you don't have to pay these people. If you could quote somebody, who would it be? Oh, okay. That's, that's actually a great question once again. And now I'm trying to think, uh, I usually have these like knocking around in my head, but now I'm obviously going to be drawing a blank. Um, because that's how it goes, right? That's how it goes. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And no, 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 not with me. I write all of these things down, and then I hope and pray that someday I'm able to use them. Oh my yeah. Favorite is my favorite is from Hip Hop Hooray by Naughty by Nature, where they say this ain't got shit to do with shampoo, but watch your head and shoulders. Like, please, that's <laughs> just <fire. laughs> I wanna drop that. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty that's, that's a that's a pretty good one that's a pretty good one because now i'm trying to like think like okay fine like which is the most literary like rap group or like rapper that i can think of um and it's probably like it will obviously like be cannibal arcs you know 
And so it's not it's not it's not Migos. It's not like Takashi Six Nine. Look, I have nothing against trap, by the way. I just want to be on record with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with trap. Um, I don't. In fact, you know what? I've actually quoted um, Cannibal Ox in something literary before. Yeah, I had yeah. this. Uh, I had this lecture that I kind of like named after one of the songs, "I and Galaxy," and um, yeah, it's. It's it's become a lecture series now, like this Iron Galaxy one, two, three, four, etc. So yeah. I guess I've quoted them, they, you know, with a song title, um, which again, just like the album, the Cold Vein, I thought was really evocative. They had this way of um, using unexpected imagery and references to like mm-hmm. talk about the group in a way that elevated it, then, and in a, in a way that was very kind of extremely inspiring for me as a 16 year old listening to it. And yeah, um, yeah it's, it's something that I've tried to put in my work. All right, all right. So people are trolling me because apparently I'm not acknowledging their questions, but you know these people who ask questions like, like lame things, like Mohale wants to plagiarize your next work because she's asking what you're working on right now. Um, I'm working on a third novel right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's been an interesting experience to be working on it during this time, actually. Um, I was saying this, actually, uh, to my partner, Mbali. Um, I think we're doing like a store run. And I was like, I think enough time has passed under lockdown for this pandemic to kind of like be properly like installed. Um, in the culture is like a historical event. So it's kind of difficult now, you know, to continue writing in the same way, in a way um, doesn't actually like acknowledge what we're in right now. And, um, and obviously you don't want to be sensationalist about it. Um, yeah. You want it to be thought out, you know? And so, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. Um, just reading working on a third book and just also trying to be present and thinking about what's happening, you know, yeah. to all and of Dengua, us. And Dengua, a very ungoogleable person, wants to know whether you Google yourself. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Philly wants to know, how many dreadlocks you have? Uh, it's How been a while since I counted. Do people count? It's been a while. It's been a while since I have, so I have no idea, right? No, I'm kidding. I've never counted. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know this was. These were literally questions that people asked. I guess. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, Dengo has another one. Do you want each book to stand on its own or are you trying to build a body of work with connections from one book to the next? Wow, that's, that's pretty good. I like that. Um, no, don't, don't I feed want the to... trolls, bruh. Don't feed the trolls. Don't, don't say it's, <laughs> average. it's average at best, bruh. It's average at best. Really? I don't know. I like that one. I've, I've, I've thought of that that one i like it um i want them to do both right um i like they also enjoyed like seeing that from writers where you can see that a particular book is obviously like in response to like a particular time in their life and where they had particular preoccupations and um they had some some shit that they were basically working through as well in this mm. book you know i like that because it attaches the work necessarily to like a human being um, not like a machine that's just like producing these texts. Um, so absolutely, man. Um, I do think that my books are in communication, sometimes explicitly, sometimes less so. Um, but yeah, but it's also very important that they indicate um, where I am 
as a writer and as a person at the time, and also um, that they're above all faithful to the subject matter. Like everything has to be in service to the book working. Mm -hmm. True, true. Okay, so I have to ask this question from Dr. Ndlovu. Considering all the awards you've received, would you say your success and opportunities guided your evolution as a writer? Um, not necessarily. No, no, I wouldn't actually say that. Like awards and stuff were like nice, but um, that's not a that's not the place where I write from. Mm. Um, yeah. Like, in fact, the place I write from is pretty much like almost diametrically opposed to that. It's very solitary. Yo, my friend, have you been mm. attending the Sasko School of Language? Diametrically opposed. Yes. <laughs> oh yo, 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 yo. Someone is running for ANC seats here. Diametrically opposed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> 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 oh that's funny man i have to give you that one that's 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 that that's a good one that's a good one. um so yeah like awards are good awards are money awards are an, are an opportunity for you to be amongst your peers and they're an opportunity for like people who are browsing a bookstore to kind of look up and you know see a thing on your cover mm. and buy your book um but really evolution as a writer is guided by reading it's guided by editing um it's yeah yeah it's it's basically guided by doing the work mm -hmm. judy has a question why did you choose a female protagonist for triangulum um so there are two reasons for that. One, it's, which I guess, I don't know which one would be the more important one, but um, the character kind of like occurred to me as, uh, as a teen girl and later on as a woman when I was conceiving the story initially. And um, the more that I worked on it, actually, um, I realized that it was an opportunity to challenge myself as a writer and also to kind of, allow me, if I succeeded, um, a viewpoint um, from which to assess like the, the, the world in the book that had uh, possibly less blind spots than someone who uh, is closer to the center, like a male character, for example. Mm, 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 mm. Um, yeah. um, we have to ask this in every, in every session uh, of Afrolit. What would you rather have, poetry or cocaine? Seeing as both of them have <laughs> fire lines and fire stanzas. <laughs> poetry, no question. Poetry. Really, nigga? Really? Poetry. Really, nigga? Yeah. One, let me, let me, let me, actually, money, let me, bro? what about the cocaine money? Let me, let me tell you something about poetry, okay? Mm -hmm. um, around 2015, I was at this residency, and um, Flex. I'm, I met this incredible poet, man, you know, uh, a dude called Jamal May. Yeah, now I am going to flex. Like, this residency is ridiculous. We're like, we're living in a castle, basically, like a me medieval, like, Italian castle. And, um, he was really good, cool, man. And we like, we chopped it up a lot. And towards the end- Wait, 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 wait. Like, what did you chop up a lot? That's a very we talked about, ambiguous statement. We, talk, we talked, <laughs> <laughs> we talked, we discussed literature, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so yeah, before, just before we left, um, he actually gave me, uh, a co well, I had a copy of, um, I asked him for a copy of this first collection of poems called Ham, uh, which is this really brilliant um, conceptual kind of like poetry collection um, dedicated to Detroit. He's from Detroit. 
And it's basically just about, you know, growing up working class in, um, in that city. And yeah, like I could go into the, the mechanics of it, but it's brilliant. So yeah. I asked him to sign it for me and um, he did. And then inside in the inscription, he actually described the book, his, his collection, Hum, as a device. Like he used the word device which wasn't surprising coming from Jamal, uh, but reading it actually, you know, um, I think he'd drawn like a little flame next to it as well. But just this idea of like um, a work of literature, a book operating like a machine is something that kind of like, you know, was really like implanted in me. And then years later, um, as I started working on Triangulum, like this idea came back to me and I also like yeah like it came back to me and I wanted to explore it more like but as a novelist and like as a fiction writer and in a way in which um it was thematically linked to the work um so yeah poetry so your so your answer to sum up things in conclusion basically is you choose poverty over cocaine money my friend I don't want to know (laughs) about the narcos money bruh I I want the narcos money (laughs) You didn't say it was about moving. you didn't say it was about moving keys. I thought it was My about friend, whether or not. It's a money. very broad question. You could interpret it any way. All I'm saying is <laughs> I want Pablo Escobar money, but Pablo Neruda bars. But you know, it's a smart way to answer <laughs> that question. All right. So uh, <laughs> Dr. Nlovu is also here shopping for a new bay, so she wants to know whether you go on coffee dates with your literary groupies. Coffee dates. I don't... How, how cheap is that, though? Coffee dates. <laughs> coffee dates. Tasha's even going broke, and you want to go to coffee dates. I've actually... I, I, I don't know about groupies, but I've, 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 I've hung out with readers, you know, um, a few times. It's been actually quite pretty... It's been pretty cool. At first, it was... It felt a little weird. Um... But then it started to make sense. We all end up hanging out in the same places anyway. So like, yeah. you know, if someone comes to you yeah. and they're like, oh, I really like, I liked your book. Um, yeah, that's oh, thank you, something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that a lot, actually. I do, yeah. I do, I do. Yeah. So, so somebody, yeah, I will, I will. Somebody says they like yeah? They are liking the humble Remy. And I'm like, there's no humility amongst greatness, my friends. This is how, this is how <laughs> players speak, bruh. Um, next, question. <laughs> next question. Zukiswa wants to know what you think of people who have charcoal burning out of their anuses. This was a very deep question that came up on Monday about people who have fire burning out of their anuses. It comes all the way from East Africa, my friend. Uganda is lit. What do you think about people who have fire burning out of their anuses? Like, that's the question. Anuses. Is it? Uh, mm, it's deep, right? Funnily, funnily enough, actually, I think... Don't, don't I tell me think this think is also it. happening in South Africa, my friend. I mean, I spent... <laughs> <laughs> Let me just put it this way. I saw a gift that describes this action that you've described. I mean, that actually illustrated it. And I think maybe mm-hmm. I thought about, you know, fire in that place, you know, like, I don't know, twice last week, maybe. Mm-hmm. It, oh, and, oh, wow. Okay, okay. The, I, I have another question. How, how did it feel? How did it feel dying in like episode five of Game of Thrones? Episode five. Okay, this is Remy. Oh, this, aren't you, aren't you, this, aren't you Daenerys Targaryen's handmaiden, Masande? Oh my God! Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to look. I mean, she's. She's quite the character, you know. That's that's a very powerful character, man. You know, it's 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 a very powerful character, and um, you know, 
I have I have I have nothing no ill nothing bad to say about that character. Although yes, of course, inevitably uh, the joke did come up once twice, three times repeatedly. Um in a literary festival. Come on, man. It was always gonna come up here. <laughs> it's crazy, man. And actually, you know, I I don't know. I think after that character, like Google Assistant learned how to pronounce my name, but like oh, after Game of Thrones. Nice, nice. So I th- I think we did something there, you know, that was it helped. And how, it how, helped. how do you how do you pronounce your surname for like all the whites who might con- call you Enchanga or like you know because you know all the East Africans because they also get defeated by things with N. Yo, we so we heard I get it? this. I was like deep. It was deep, bro. On Monday it was deep. So how do you pronounce <laughs> your surname for like the whites? I pronounce it how it's pronounced. We usually have to sit down, and then we have to like you know. Um, we we talk about it. We talk about it. They show me their first draft. They uh-huh. receive the first draft. I edit it. I give it back. And um, yeah, we usually hash it out before actually. I wait. It's crazy. I, wait. I remember this, uh, this one time in the U.S. and I was about to read, but like it was kind of it's a, it was a bit of a weird event in that. Um, I was an act before musicians. So like I had to go up and read that before musicians. So like the guy who was announcing me had to be like extremely like hyper, but I didn't anticipate just how hyper actually. Um, so I got onto stage. So firstly, um, in the green room, he's basically kind of saying, is this how you pronounce your name? He says it and surprisingly gets it right, right from the go. Uh, from the get-go and then um so i go on stage but then like completely unexpectedly he like does this thing where it's like an announcer like in a wrestling match dude and he really like shouts it and it stretches it out you know like he's kind of announcing like a prize fight but he got it right so it was pretty interesting Ah, respect respect all right so we're about to instagram is going to cut us off in a few minutes uh, thanks, everyone, for having come through. If I didn't ask your question, uh, I'm not really sorry. I tried to get through as many as I could. Masande, thanks so much for making the time, man. It was, it was enlightening, as usual, to just share a stage and a platform with you. It was dope, man. We're looking forward to, like, all your work, everything that you're working on now. Good luck Thank for that. Much, and, man. yeah, man, just looking yeah. forward to meeting you again on a bookshelf, on a, on a, on a bookshelf somewhere. Thank you, everyone, as well. Thank you, Piliswe and Suki. Yeah. Even Makataka came in late, as usual. Hey, Zimbabweans, you can't trust them, eh? <laughs> uh, um, uh, all the, all the, all the names that PhD, I might have thank butchered, you. I'm not sorry. Yeah, James for hosting this, for, for like always publicizing this. Troy and Yango for sticking through this. Tash, Maza for not asking questions. Thank you, Maza. Um, yeah, no, everyone, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yo, 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 when you exit, remember to save and share this to your timeline, bruv. Uh, so just press the X in the corner and then a screen will come up and s- saying, uh, share this to your story uh, and then just accept that. Don't delete this, yeah? Otherwise, okay. so will kill me. will kill me, bruv. <laughs> Okay, cool, cool. Hi, man. Um, yeah, man, well. thanks. All the, best. All the best with the writing, man. You too, you too. Everyone keep safe, please. For sure, for sure.